This animation will highlight select aspects of robotic radical prostatectomy and presents a simplified view of the anatomy of this area of the body. We begin with a view of the endopelvic fascia. Beneath the endopelvic fascia, we see the bladder and prostate, along with other structural elements. In this view, we also see the levator fascia, which covers the prostate. The pelvic plexus is found on the anterolateral aspect of the rectum. The important erectile components of this plexus include the vesicle plexus and the prostatic plexus, and interconnecting nerve fibers. These ganglions and neuronal connections form a proximal neurovascular plate, which can be injured during dissection of the seminal vesicles. The neurovascular plate coalesces to form the neurovascular bundle, the complex of nerves and blood vessels on the posterolateral aspect of the prostate. The neurovascular bundles lie on each side of the prostate, between the prostatic fascia and the levator fascia. On the bottom, they're bounded by Dunovillier's fascia. The space in which the bundles are located is the neurovascular triangle. Moving to the apex of the prostate, we can see the pubic bones and pubo-prostatic ligaments, the dorsal venous complex, and the striated urethral sphincter. Our animation of the surgery begins with the separation of the bladder and prostate. Once the bladder neck is clearly identified, the two organs are carefully cut apart. Next, the retrotrigonal fibromuscular layer is identified and cut through to expose the anterior surfaces of the vas deferentia and seminal vesicles. From this point forward, the surgery is done without cautery. The vas deferentia and the arteries running to them are secured athermally and cut. The vas deferentia and seminal vesicles are then lifted up and secured to the prostate base with a stitch. The prostate is now lifted up and de Novillier's fascia is separated. The blood vessels in the foreground in this section are secured athermally using minute clips or sutures and cut. Here we illustrate how the robotic instruments, which are able to move in almost any direction, accomplish this. Next, the prostate is retracted to one side and an incision is made in the levator fascia over the neurovascular bundle, exposing the neurovascular triangle. This provides an initial release of the neurovascular bundles. The neurovascular triangle is entered and the bundles are released by cutting close to the prostatic fascia as blood vessels in this section are secured and cut. Once completely released, the bundles fall away from the apex. This procedure is repeated for the neurovascular bundles on both sides. Another key step in the surgery is the development of the apical notch and transection of the urethra. At this point in the surgery, the prostate is attached only at the apex. The prostate is pulled back so that the puboprostatic ligaments are exposed and can be cut close to the prostate. The dorsal venous complex is now also secured and then cut. Next, the prostate is freed from the striated urethral sphincter and the urethra is cut. The Foley catheter can be seen here. This frees the prostate for removal from the body. In this surgical technique, the nerves and blood vessels that are key to maintaining sexual functioning should still be preserved at the end of the operation. The bladder neck and the urethra are now carefully sutured together so that the nerves are not trapped in the suturing and the operation can be completed.